I've got Paul Beal on today from Frankenfly. This is our second mad scientist. This is the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, episode 129. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. I'm setting up a trip to uh, Mexico for the Big Four this fall. If you want to come along with me and a few of the listeners from the podcast, head over to wetflyswing.com slash Mexico, and I'll follow up with you there. Uh, this is part of the new uh, first species series I have uh, that I'm just starting up here. So uh, we're going to find some uh, some good incentives and, and some bonuses to, to get people out out and about and trying some new areas and new uh, new species this year. Today we hear uh, the story of Frankenfly from Paul Beal. He talks about um, you know how he how he all came to be. Find out which are his best selling uh, original patterns and the background on some of his most popular flies. Find out why Paul is so fired up about carp. What good fly design looks like and who the carp stalker is. Since 1977, the Fly Fishing and Tying Journal has long been considered the Angler's Magazine, with original how-tos and technical articles written by the best trout and steelhead anglers in the West. FTJ is committed to sharing exceptionally written essays, fiction, poetry, and in-depth guides to fly fishing destinations. FTJ is one of my go-to magazines, and if you haven't checked it out recently, you can get started by calling 1-800-541-9498 or heading over to the web at ftjangler.com. So, without further ado, here's Paul Beal from Frankenfly.com. How's it going, Paul? Great. How are you doing, Dave? Good. Good uh, Good to have you on the show here. Um, we're going to dig into a little bit today on your background with the Flank, uh, Frankenfly. Uh, it's definitely uh, one of those websites. I, I know a little bit of the background there. We're going to dig into some of that and then uh, maybe talk about some of the things you're, you know, the new things you have on tap that you're working on now. And I know carp uh, flies, we were talking about that a little bit off air. Um, that's going to be one of the topics, but maybe just start, uh, start us off first talking about how you got into um, fly tying, how that all start up. Well, it uh, it kind of started a long time ago when uh, my grandpa uh, taught me how to fish at a younger age, and uh, he was not a fly fisherman. Uh, he would uh, he was a just a regular standard gear fisherman, and that's how I learned. And uh, but what he would do, he was a handyman. And he worked on things. He had a shop where he worked on TVs and, and he worked on building things and all this stuff. And he made his own lures. Uh, he would take old teapots and he would cut the teapots up for the metal. And he would take, you know, wood and carve it into the lures that he wanted and put it all together. Um, uh, so I was used to seeing that kind of thing. Um, uh, and then I, you know, life went on and, and, uh, you know, grandpa passed away and, and I kind of got out of fishing for a little while and, and then my son got back, back into it. He wanted me to take him out. And, and so I went out with him and that got me back into it. Well, then I started reading online, uh, different things about fishing. And then I just stumbled upon fly fishing and I had never tried that before. And then I, you know, I start reading all the kind of unique names that go along with fly fishing that you might, you know, blue winged olive or, you know, uh, different names of flies that are kind of odd. And, and, and I kind of just wanted to know more and I kept reading. And then I realized, you know, through fly tying, you could, you could tie your own flies to fish with. And I thought, wow, you know, that, that would be a way I could be like my grandpa because I could never do the things he was doing. Uh, so uh that's what really got me started into it uh from then on i just i studied on my own and i did everything i could uh, to learn uh how to fly tie mm -hmm. and wh when did you when did freak and fly when when did that site begin uh probably about uh 2012 was probably the first post 
uh, oh. on Frankenfly. Okay. And what it, now, if, can you describe uh, Frankenfly to somebody who maybe hasn't been there if they're going there? And, and maybe just talk about, I'm not sure if that's your main thing you do around the fly fishing and tying space, or maybe you just talk about first, you know, describe Frankenfly. Let, let, let's start there. Uh, Frankenfly um, is not only a website, it's my fly tying business, but um, almost everybody knows me from the website. Uh, I get comments all the time at shows saying, you know, hey, I've been on the website. I love it. You know, uh, keep up the good work. But what it is, is uh, it's basically where I, I post all kinds of fly tying information, uh, but some general fly fishing information. But mostly I stick to fly tying. It would be videos or I have interviews with different fly tires and the and the videos I post aren't uh mine per se they're they're from other fly tires and i highlight other fly tires and i post you know um, e-magazines and interviews and and i might highlight a couple different flies from a, a fly tire that i think uh would be nice to highlight yeah, that's basically what it is do you um do you blog? I mean, I know you share a lot of other stuff. Do you, do you also still blog and write articles kind of of your own stuff? Yeah. You know, from time to time, I will write about, you know, what I'm doing or what I'm up to. Or I'll like, I don't know, I think it was like a week, a week or so ago, the the new bobbin from uh, Loon Outdoors uh, I've been using. So I wrote a, a little review blog about that bobbin because i i like it so what what's the bobbin called it's a ergo i think it's a all-purpose ergo bobbin from loon outdoors oh cool yeah i've got uh, matt um matt from loon who does i think their videos out there he's going to be on here pretty soon i think so I'll oh, yeah to, yeah i'll yeah. have to hit him up a little bit on some of the gear stuff. So what do you, so I guess, so we, we got a little background. I mean, it sounds like you curate content and you write some reviews and then, and then you also tie flies or what is your, I mean, mostly the, on the business side, what, what do you do? What are you producing there? Yeah, I mostly, uh, tie flies. I've tied for many different shops. Uh, I've tied for some shops in, uh, fly shops in Michigan. I, uh, I've tied for Mad River Outfitters in Ohio, uh, Tight Lines Fly Fishing is in Wisconsin, uh, various different fly shops around the Midwest, and I've tied flies for Deddy Flies out in Roscoe, New York, which is in Livingston Manor now. They moved. Um, and then I do my own uh, flies where I sell them on the website also. Okay. And uh- – and you do some also some uh, social media stuff for some other uh, uh, industry companies. Yes, I do. I I do social media from uh, for Jay Stockard Fly Fishing, and I manage their pro team, which we call the the uh, Jay Stockard Pro Tires. Uh, I do social media for HMH Vices, mm-hmm. and I also manage their pro team of tires. Uh, Willow Mock Creek, which is also owned by Deddy Flies, uh, the well, the same person who owns Deddy Flies out in New York. Uh, it's actually the U.S. distributor of Partridge Hooks, oh, okay. and uh, you know Partridge of Redditch. It's yeah. from England. Yeah, uh, and and then uh, Rainy's Flies. If you're familiar oh, yeah. with Rainy, yeah, yeah, Deddy's Flies. Yeah, yeah, I had. Uh, yeah. I had Rainy on in a past episode as well. You been is it the Deddy Flies? Can you uh, spell that? Uh, Deddy Flies is spelled D E T T E. Okay, and then flies. Yeah. All right, cool. I'll put uh, I'll put some links to some of that stuff in the show notes. Um, you also mentioned you do interviews. So are these interviews? These aren't uh, necessarily like a podcast, or where, where are those being posted? Yeah, uh, they're posted on Frank and Fly. They're not a podcast. They're just text. Uh, what I do is I'll I'll uh, I'll just write all the questions in an email and I'll send it to this person and they'll answer them on their own time and and send them oh, back cool. when they're ready and then I and then I put the post together and I include uh, I make sure I include photos with the interviews each time I post them. 
Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, I see that you got you got a few here. And then out of those uh, interviews, do you know which one, um, you know, do you have a favorite or do you have one that was like your most popular? Do you watch, I mean, do you follow your um, um, Google analytics and stuff pretty close on your site? Yeah, I do. I, uh, I, I make sure that the site is, is uh, being visited often. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I have a favorite, uh, favorite interview i i don't know i you know some of the recent ones uh i tell you the the most recent one that comes to mind is wayne sampson and i he was a he's a fly tire and he was a uh kind of a disciple of uh of uh chris helm which was a uh kind of a legend with deer hair tying so uh Mm -hmm. it was it was it was good to put wayne up there because i've known wayne for years and i know he is a very good tire, and I don't think he gets the recognition that he deserves sometimes. So, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. cool. I'll uh, I'll find that one and put a link out to that article as well. Um, what do you okay. think? I mean, you mentioned, I guess, if you think about, you know, uh, again, we kind of talked off air just for a second about this, but you know, the things you do best. It sounds like um, streamers are something that you're you're most well known for. What, what do you what do you enjoy doing, and what what are you working on right now? Uh, well, I enjoy, I enjoy doing, um, I've enjoyed for years doing streamers and I, I do some, some of my own poppers. I have like a Franken frog that I've come up with, uh, using kind of rainy's flies, foam, uh, poppers and putting them together in a certain way to form this frog. Uh, but I work on some bass flies and streamers and, uh, but lately I have, uh, I've actually been into carp flies. So, uh, at the end of the last season here, I, uh, I caught a, uh, fairly large grass carp and, uh, it just, you know, it just changed my whole perception of, of, uh, of carp. I mean, I've always, I've, I've had this thing with carp for years where I've always looked at the flies and I've always been intrigued by them. Um, but at the end of the season, when I caught that grass carp, it just really kicked me into high gear. Hmm. And that's all I've been thinking about. That's cool. Yeah. That's- uh, so yeah. And so I've, I've dove into, really designing my own carp flies now and i'm i'm really gearing up for this next season here what on the carp flies if we just stay on that track for a little bit what do you think um you know for flies what 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 it, what makes a good carp fly design uh well to me i've been uh what i've done of i i've really researched um the best i can out there uh of what carp flies are, are available and if you you know dive into a book like uh jay zimmerman has uh he had a really nice book on carp flies that came out and also dan frazier uh it, it says an intro to carp flies but really it's just a well-balanced book of kinds of carp flies mm-hmm. uh it's really not an intro it goes even deeper than that uh so b- between those two books and Everything I can view on YouTube or read, um, it varies on, on, on a good carp fly. You ha- uh, the main thing is you have to have a, uh, a fly that rides hook up because mm-hmm. you're, you know, you're, you're bouncing this fly on the bottom quite often because, of course, the carp are feeding off the bottom most of the time, uh, <clears throat> although they will chase a fly. Um, Sometimes, hmm. uh, not always. It just depends on what water what water you're in mm-hmm. and, and how your area is. Um, but you know, the, a hook that rides up. What I've been concentrating on is, is a uh, kind of a tail that that comes up in the back a little bit um, uh, of some type, and and uh, and some weight on the front. And the weight you kind of you kind of got to play with too. Sometimes you want to uh, something that'll sink you know fairly quickly or uh you know a lot of carp flies use bead chain eyes where you know it won't make make such a noise when you're you're casting it out there and and Mm -hmm. uh you know somewhere near the carp so you're you know not spooking them uh so uh, you know i've kind of played with both um and uh you know that's what i'm i've got about three different ones that i'm really happy with right now that i'm i'm 
I'm ready to throw this next season here to see uh, what will happen. Nice. And where, where are you at? What location? I'm in uh, Terre Haute, Indiana. Oh, in Indiana. Okay. And, and is yeah. carp, uh, is that a pretty popular fishery out there? Uh, you know, in my area in Indiana, it's, it's, uh, you know, fly fishermen, fly fishers, uh, are kind of rare. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got some, uh, in Indianapolis, which is about an hour away from me. And there's, uh, you know, I can count on one hand of how many are in my town. Um, but the, uh, actually the carp water around here, there's quite a bit I can, I can get to. And also there's a, uh, there's a uh, guy in Indianapolis who uh, is a good friend of mine, uh, Eric Coria. Uh, his, uh, if you go to his Instagram, it's uh, Carp Stalker One. He's really been uh, great to talk with and, and get his insight on carp because he's that's. I mean, he's done it for many years, and he, you know, he loves it. So, uh, so I'll be fishing with him at the beginning of the season too, throughout the season. So we've got some trips already oh, cool. planned around our area. So when's the season for, when's the best time to fish for carp out there? Uh, well, it starts in May, you know, we'll probably, we'll probably start, you know, you could start a little bit earlier and, and see what you get, you know, they spawn early. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, May through, you know, through the summer and, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. I've even seen Eric, he, he's been even posting photos of him catching them this winter. And I, I don't normally fish during the winter. So, yeah. uh, around this area, but he's, he's been hitting, hitting it and, and doing well. So cool. How, how have the winters been? Has it been a little, uh, is it cool out there right now? Uh, it's about 32. It oh. hasn't been too bad of a winter. Uh, you know, we get worse winters than this, uh, especially, but it's been pretty mild winter. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I was looking, uh, you know, back to your, on the website on Frankenfly. So do you do, uh, I mean, do you have a YouTube channel? Do you do videos out there, tying videos and all that stuff? No, I don't. I, I you know, I've been asked that many times. Uh, I just never uh, got to the place where I felt like I, I wanted to get all the equipment and make sure everything was just so, so, and I, yeah. you know, and, and get a good space and, you mm -hmm. know, put the time in and really what, what really scares me about it is the editing yeah yeah <laughs> <That's right. laughs> which i'm sure which i'm sure you understand even with the podcast yeah yeah i know audio uh -huh. takes takes some time but yeah video is a whole nother level that's for sure uh, yeah yeah um so what do you when you're choosing so you're grabbing stuff out there how do you choose what to post i mean what what do you um do you just is it just you posting and do you just choose whatever you know how do you go through that process because you're posting every day aren't you I try to post every day. I used to religiously for, I don't know, until about two years ago, I probably posted every single day, even on the weekends. Um, I I get pretty busy these days, so I take the weekends off most of the time, um, And but I try to post every day through the week. So, yeah, no, I mean, I think we have a good feel for your site. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? You post things that you, you see out there while you're searching online and, and – uh, do you and social wise, where are you? Where do you spend your time on social media for at least for the Frankenfly? Uh, I I spend a lot of my time on Instagram. I really yeah. like Instagram. Yeah. Um, it's you know it's just the photos and and uh, you get to see. I mean, there's a there is just a, a really good uh, following, uh, a good community on Instagram for uh, fly tires. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good. Uh, medium to to check into if you're excited about fly tying. So, yep. do you do uh, Twitter at all? Uh, I've done Twitter in the past. I don't normally do it for uh, the stuff I do, even for the companies, because I just didn't I didn't see much return mm -hmm. uh, when I did it. Yeah, so, yeah. okay, cool. Um, well, I had a, qu a couple questions here from. Um, you, these are some of the, from our Facebook group. Uh, this was a uh, Gil who was asking about, um, he had some struggles with like tying tiny wet flies. Do, do you, have you ever tied many, many wet flies or would you have a tip for people that are tying a small fly? I'm not sure if, if you even focus on that at all. Well, at one time I did, I went through a phase where I tied, uh, flimps, 
I don't know if you've mm-hmm. heard of Flint. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. that's who Dave Hughes, right? Or yeah. I think it's Hughes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there is a, uh, I think there still is, a Flint Forum. Uh, <laughs> nice. It's a small little community uh, that, that ties flimps, and it's a soft tackle type wet fly. I don't actually tie the classic type of wet flies, uh-huh. but I went through the whole flimp thing and, and really got into it for a while because I found it really cool how, you know, once you figure out, you know, uh, how to do it and how it's supposed to be done. It's a, it's kind of a relaxing fly to tie. Um, I don't know if he's talking about those kind of wet flies or is he talking about, or is he talking about the classic wet? Fly? Yeah. You know what? I don't know exactly, but I think either now one, I think, about yeah, yeah, it, yeah, I think he might be talking about, I would say he's probably talking about the class, maybe the smaller, I mean, right. Classics are probably a little harder than tying the flimps. Yeah. I never really got into the classic wet flies. Yep. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the classic wet flies are well, just like classic dry flies, right? It's a whole, it's like another another level there as well. That's uh, right. So, yeah. so you don't like tying, so you don't tie much of the the super tiny stuff, or that's not something you really enjoy. I, you know, the small what? Well, when I first started tying quite a bit, and especially when I tied for some Michigan shops like Gates uh, Lodge and uh, Northern Angler, uh, they would ask for. Uh, like Michigan dry flies or uh, every, you know, uh, things that were like size 10 and 12. Mm, I, you right. know, the smallest I would probably go for one of those shops would be like a size 16. I wouldn't go much past that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at around that time, I, I got into tying Michigan dry flies quite a bit, especially the classic ones. Uh, there's quite a few of them. If you, delve into it yeah what, what are um, Michigan, no, I'm, I'm not even familiar so michigan dry flies it's a whole nother it's a whole niche of its own thing yeah it really is there's been some uh dry flies uh in michigan that were created quite some time ago um, by different uh fly tires that are r- still used today up there uh even when a guide will take you out you might use a roberts yellow drake you know, that's a classic Michigan dry fly that gotcha. was created, I don't know, I think it was the, if I remember right, the 60s. Uh-huh. Uh, and they still use it. You know, they'll say, hey, put on a Robert Shell Drake, that'll do it. And, you know, it, you know, there's several of those. There's a Borcher Special is uh, is still used up there. That's a that's mm-hmm. a classic, classic Michigan dry fly. If you look up some of these flies on my website, oh, cool. uh, Frankenfly, uh, you'll, you'll – You'll get some – if you type in the search box in the right-hand corner, uh, it'll come up with some uh, results of and tell you a lot about that because I wrote about the history on, on oh, a gotcha. lot of those. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at a, a page right now, michigandryflies.net, and it says – Yeah. Yeah, it says mm-hmm. their purpose is to preserve brook and brown rainbow trout uh, dry fly patterns created, That's right. created in Michigan by Michigan Tires. So there you go. Yep. Awesome. Well, there's another new show topic for me. I'll have to <laughs> add to the list. <laughs> I, I've been wanting to get into one of the things I've been wanting to get into is the classic, like the cat skill. I find a guest that can really, you know, talk about the cat skill style of dry flies. Well, then you should really contact, you know, I, I, I talked about daddy flies uh-huh. uh, earlier. You should talk to Joe Fox if you if you can, okay. he is the owner of Deddy Flies, and he's actually the grandson of Walt Deddy and Winnie Deddy. And if you look up those names, they are classic Catskill tires, there and they were very well known in that area. Nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I think I might have heard of Joe somewhere along the way. I'm sure I may have even contacted him. Um, what, what now in your area, what is your home, um, your home river or home water, do you consider? I would say my home river for me is Sugar Creek. They Sugar call Creek. it Sugar Creek. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. And what's what's that like? If you take us to Sugar Creek, are you catching, um, is this a trout fishery or there a carp somewhere in Sugar Creek or what's that look like? Uh, no, it's actually a smallmouth bass. Oh, wow. Uh, fishery. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's got, uh, what's nice about it, it's really beautiful in some spots because it has a lot of limestone. Uh, Indiana limestone uh, along the banks and big, large limestone rocks in certain areas. Mm-hmm. So, and is it uh, pretty pretty popular fishery? I mean, I'd smallmouth. I guess you have smallmouth and largemouth. You kind of have a little bit of everything out there. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it's got Sugar Creek has a uh, has some large mouth in it, but it's mostly a small mouth uh, fishery. And and if you say, "Hey, I went to Sugar Creek," you know, I fished Sugar Creek last week. Yeah, hey, everybody knows what Sugar Creek is around here. Yeah. Yep. That's it. That's it. And are there like uh, locally? Do you have um, a few fly shops around your area? And when what what city are you in? I'm in Terre Haute, uh, Terre Haute, Indiana. Okay. Uh, I, I do not have a fly shop in Terre Haute. Um, there, the closest fly shop for me is in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's, uh, a, a fly shop called moving waters. Uh, it's in Zionsville and it's, it's pretty much Indiana. It's right there at, mm-hmm. in Indianapolis. Uh, mm-hmm. and there is uh, fly masters, uh, and there is a Orvis uh, store mm-hmm. in Carmel, Indiana, which is another extension of Indianapolis right there. Gotcha. Uh, and I actually worked at that, or that Orvis store for a while as the fishing lead. But Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, we kind of skipped ahead uh, to the Frankenfly thing. But after you, you mentioned back your grandpa got you started, how, how did you – I mean, you, you got into fly fishing. It was just a slow, gradual process. And then – I mean, at what point did you get into where you were making this your kind of a full-time uh, income sort of thing? Uh, let's see. Um, it probably happened – I mean, I just gradually – I just kept working on – you know, on everything on, on fly tying, fly fishing. I had a, I had a, actually a certified, uh, fly caster living about 40 minutes from me that I was able to get a hold of. And uh, he, he still fishes with me today and he taught me how to cast. And then I just worked on it from there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think it was about 2016 or two, I think 2016 is when I went and was able to do it on my own but i you know it was just not all tying flies i i didn't feel like i could uh have enough income just tying flies so that's why i added i I used to uh be a computer guy way back and so i was able to get into the whole social media thing gotcha and that's what helped me yeah that's that's how you did it yeah so that's where the social comes from you had a computer background (laughs) right yeah yeah that's uh, do you find that challenging to keep up with the industry as things change or is that something you you, you kind of enjoy you, you, you're you know something you're good at no I really enjoy that part of it I, I'm always I mean even in, when I'm not posting uh, for one of the companies I work for I I'm still on there browsing everything I can about you know fly fishing or fly tying in general yeah. That's right. That's and I, that's what I heard. I think I heard you talking about that. How you basically that's where you get a lot of your links and content for Frankenfly is the stuff you're out there looking on social for these other companies, and then you find an article that looks interesting, and then you kind of put it in the back of your head for later, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of good stuff on there, and and I mean that I find on on social media, and then. You know, and there and there's still stuff out there that I don't even, you know, I don't, I haven't even realized yet. You know, I'll stumble upon someone, uh, you know, that I had had not seen before, you know, like an Instagram page or something. I'm like, oh wow, you, you know, he or she does really good stuff. You know. Yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of that's a thing. There's no short supply of people out there. I mean, how do you filter through the the good versus the bad? You know, you see, I get, I mean, do you watch? I mean, so you watch these videos and. You kind of make a determination. Is there some stuff? I mean, what, what do you think percentage wise? What What is stuff that's because you hear people talk about that a lot? Like you got to be careful of YouTube, you know, watching flight time videos. You know, my person might have just started. How do you filter between the good and the bad? <laughs> well, I think, you know, I uh, I just kind of go on my own uh, what experience I've had. And with, the, you know, and I always through the years have asked, you know, questions from other fly tires. I'm always trying to learn myself too. Uh, and I, I think between what I've learned from others and, and what I've, you know, learned myself, I just kind of use, use that knowledge the best I can and, and try to determine if I, I think, you know, maybe this YouTube video is, is a good video. And, and some you'll see right off the bat that, you know, ah, 
you know, I can tell, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, he might just be starting out, you know, but that's fine. You know, everybody starts somewhere, mm-hmm. but it's not something I want to put on there and, you know, and say, Hey, you need to pay attention to what this guy's telling you or, or, you know, something like that. Um, you know, and that, that's kind of the way I determine it. And, and then sometimes it takes me a while and, and I might see something that I, that's done a certain way that I don't, I don't think is it might not be the best way to show and so i i may not i may not post that hmm. do you get it a lot of if people that makes any sense yeah, yeah do you get a lot of people reaching out to you to to post stuff on your site uh i don't get a you know i don't get a lot of people you know asking me um but i do yeah uh, what is good about it is when i do post something uh Usually, I, I'll get a message from the person that that did, that did the video or took the oh, photos right. or or tied the fly and say, "Hey, hey man, I, I saw what you posted. I, I really appreciate you putting me on your site. You know, yeah, something like that, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. Okay, cool. And I noticed you got a section on the top of your header. You have some of your links, and you got Angler's Choice uh, and a bunch of other. How do the those link? How do that you choose those? Um, you know, I think there's about 20 or 30 different links in there that, that up, are up on your main link site. Yeah, uh, just that links page there. Anybody can, uh, you know, request that they uh, that I put their link on there. All okay. they do, all they have to do is contact me and say, hey, I'd, you know, I'd like to add my link to your links page if you would, and then I'll add it on there. And now a quick word from our sponsor. FTJ Spring Edition is packed with the best fly tying instruction, fly fishing techniques, destination articles, and fly fishing stories. Here are a few of the featured fly tires in the Spring Edition of the Fly Fishing and Tying Journal. Master Fly Tire Dave McNeese begins his multi-part tutorial on the secrets of dyeing your own materials. I know this is a hot topic because I've been uh, hearing about it from some listeners of the podcast, so this is going to be a big one. This is going to be super helpful. Uh, we find out also how to tie big durable flies for predator, uh, predatory fish, an effective uh, cicada pattern, and we hear about a 14-year-old uh, fly tire who's who's kicking some butt out there, uh, lining up sponsors and ambassadors. So we're, we get to hear that story in the uh, in the spring edition. Also, Gary Lewis gives us a little rundown on Diamond Lake as he heads out there, and we're also going to be heading to San Diego with Joe Warren, who talks about tuna, dorado. Wahoo and more. Dave Hughes provides a tribute to Frank Amato in in the dish, the spring edition, and we get an update on the short story contest. Lots of additional content in this one, so uh, head over to ftjangler.com and subscribe so you don't miss any of the tips, tricks, and stories in the next issue. That's ftjangler.com to get started today. Uh, tell them uh, you heard uh, about the. Uh, the magazine from the podcast and I'll figure out a way to make it up to you. Okay. Back to the show. Maybe we could start. I want to get to the dubbing in a second, but maybe just talk about if you think of three of your flies that are maybe your most popular ones that are out there. Can you describe and maybe start with one of those and talk about, you know, a little bit about that fly, how how it maybe describe it. Uh, Well, the first one that comes to mind is, is probably the first one I, that I sent and and it was accepted by Orvis um, uh, for their catalog and it was it's called the Bearded Wonder mm-hmm. and it was an articulated streamer and basically I I used it uh, at that time I I was real I, and I still do to this day I, I fish a lot for largemouth bass um, not just smallmouth bass mm-hmm. so uh, because one of the things I really enjoy and and, and some people aren't into this. They really like, you know, being on the river, which I, I love myself too. But I, I, there's this thing about being on a, a lake or a pond where I don't, where I can just relax and just fish and not have to worry about anything moving. And it's just, you know, and I can fish. It just is really relaxing to me. Mm-hmm. And so and most of the time I'm fishing for largemouth bass or bluegill, but most of the time, largemouth bass so this fly started out as a largemouth bass fly i was just i was i was really into articulated streamers um my schmidt uh who who you probably heard of Mm -hmm. uh always answered my questions when i was first starting and and getting into articulated streamers i would always ask him uh what he thought 
you know, was the best way and, and give me any tips. And he was always really, really nice about that and, and gave me, uh, really good answers on everything. So, mm-hmm. uh, th- this is the fly that started, uh, you know, me on, on that. And, and so I designed it to go after largemouth bass, but actually it would work for, it started working for uh, big brown trout, oh, wow. um, s- smallmouth bass, but, uh, really big brown trout and largemouth bass is really the kind of articulated fly it is. Gotcha. And it's got a, it's kind of got a deer head, uh, head on it with uh, some weighted eyes and it's kind of unique the way the uh, the uh i put the materials on the back hook and the front hook i I try to stay away from there's a lot of uh uh kind of a woolly bugger kind of a wrap uh, on some uh articulated streamers and i just try to do my own thing and try to try to do something different and Mm -hmm. i just and it may turn out kind of weird. I mean, the bearded wonder, it's not a real pretty fly, but, yeah. <laughs> but it, you know, it's a little, it's a little different and it works well. Yeah, it's so, definitely uh, different. You know, yeah. So, so, and it's, what it was, it imitating, is it imitating it, anything? No, what, you know what I was, I wasn't really trying to imitate anything. Yeah. I was basically just going after the action, okay. the action, the, the tail, the way the tail, uh, and, and the tail bu- is the tail bucktail, brown and white bucktail. Yeah, it's brown and white bucktail. Brown and white bucktail. And then what's the? It looks like you have some orange, the orange striped rubber legs off the back, some deer hair. And then what's the the brown? Is that your dubbing in the middle of the the back articulated fly? The brown? No, actually, no. The brown is actually just a uh, cross cut rabbit strip. Oh, that's that right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep, there you go. And then it's got some. Pee and then it. I put deer hair in the in the middle of the shank, and then I keep wrapping the. The rabbit past oh, that. Oh, rabbit past that. Okay, and then it's got a little peacock mm-hmm. for kind of like almost looks like a wing on top, and then uh-huh. and then and then the bearded the white. What, what is that? Is that what, what is that material? That is uh, that is my monster dub. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, that looks like yeah, yeah. looks like dub. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. So the, yeah, and it's got some big big uh, buggy eyes. So it is it is cool looking. It almost like a it looks like a mix between a almost like a mammal and a bird. It's it's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've gotten that a lot. Yeah. They, they, a lot of people say, Oh, it looks like a bird, you know, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Wounded, wounded bird. <laughs> That's awesome. What, what, uh, so in now maybe you talk about the, um, you mentioned the dubbing on the front, the, the monster dub. Can you talk a little about, um, the monster dub, how that came to be? And is that, you have multiple dubbing uh, lines, right? Yeah. I've got a couple different, uh, dubbing and then i've got some uh, streamer hair and stuff uh that aren't really dubbing they're more for uh, you know long hair uh but the uh, monster dub came about i really got i really like uh senio's laser laser dub mm-hmm. uh that greg senio uh came up with so uh i was working and at the time i was working uh for nuns uh you know catholic nuns uh, so oh, wow. Uh, they raised alpacas, uh-huh. and um, I could use all the hair I wanted from the alpacas, and they would just let me have it. The because they they would shave them, you know, they would shave the alpacas at a certain time uh, every year, mm-hmm. and so they would have a bunch of this hair sitting around. And so I uh, I used that, and I used some synthetic and uh, a little bit of. Uh, flash and I and I came up with my own uh, kind of long sh- streamer dubbing uh, just because I was inspired by Senyo's laser dub uh, and so it, it, what it, it, it I just wanted to make sure it was different though and, and so I put the alpaca in there it kind of it, it makes it quite a bit softer and it's a little bit longer than Senyo's laser dub and um, You'll see the there, when you use it, you'll see long strands, uh, kind of a little bit thicker than than the rest of the dubbing, and that's the alpaca. Okay. Uh, so it, it's at the time when I that was the first material I made, and at the time, I was just trying to come up with something that was, you know, well liked and and could mm-hmm. be used a lot and. I wasn't concentrating on how to how to make it, and so if I would go back again, I would figure out a better way to make it because mm-hmm. it takes takes me a long time. Uh, so that's how it came about. But it, you know, it's people still 
use it to this day. I, I sell it on Jay Stockard fly fishing, and it you know it still sells well. Hmm. Cool. How do you uh, how do you make that the monster dub? It I I have to put it basically on a uh, kind of like this wool board. You know, uh, you, you ever seen like wool carters? They have these like metal thing like little needle things kind of like almost like a dog brush but a dog brush won't work right oh, okay you, you have yeah. to use like a, a wool uh carter kind of like this and and i got a, a large one a, a really large mm-hmm. one and i i have to scrape it i scrape it all after i put all the materials and blend them to, i scrape it to make it oh wow mm-hmm. so okay and then how would that compare to say what, what is a more recent dubbing that you're making how, how would it be different as far as the process of making it well the hair uh the, to compare it to to the hair that i make like the I, the werewolf hair has become uh pretty popular people like it it's a synthetic mi- mixed with a wool and i blend some flash into it and i just do it all with my hands i, I don't even use any kind of tools mm-hmm. i can i can just blend it all i've, I've figured out a way to just do it with my hands mm. and it doesn't take me near as long as, as, as no the kidding. other stuff. So, yeah. So you've, and uh, uh, it, are you at a point where you're thinking about maybe, you know, having somebody kind of hiring that out and having somebody else to do it, or is that something you, you're still handling? No problem. Uh, uh, I'm still handling it for now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I've thought about that uh, from time to time as have someone else handle it, but I, I'm still okay with it now. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I mean, we, we started to talk a little bit about the, the carp flies, but I think that, you know, I mean, we could maybe touch on that a little bit before we get out of here, but I was just kind of stay on that. You, you mentioned the, we talked about that first fly, the bearded, um, uh, what was the bearded wonder or what was the, yeah. Yeah. Bearded wonder. Do you have another couple of flies you might throw out there that are, you know, popular flies that come to your mind? I, I think the, the one you know, I'd mentioned the Franken frog. That's really been a, a popular fly for me here the last couple of years. After I came up with it, uh, uh, I, every time I'm at a show, people you know they really are uh, they they really go kind of crazy over that fly. They they like the look of it. I mean, it looks like a frog, and you know they ask me all kinds of questions about it. And then, oh, wow. and I yeah. I you know I was just trying to. I was just at the time I was just trying to you Rainey sent me some of their popper products and, and Jesse said, Hey, you know, see what you can come up with, you know, mm-hmm. like, just try something. And so I was just, I had a table full of popper bodies and I was just try, sitting there trying to piece them together. I, I, I didn't even, I wasn't even trying to go after the look of a frog. I just, it just kind of worked into that after I started, <laughs> you know, piecing different, you know, oh, that don't look right. You know, I, and I wasn't even trying to mimic anything. I was just trying to come up with something cool, you know. And then, you know, once I had those certain pieces put together, I realized I, realized I could make a frog out of it. I, oh, okay, this this could probably work. And then I had to, you know, figure out how to, you know, get the legs to uh, go a, a certain way or, you know, uh, how to attach them. Yeah. And, uh one part of that fly is a is some lead. Uh, I, I wrap some lead around the uh, bend of the hook, and it's not. People think it's because the their first reaction is that I put that back there so the back end will go and and sink a little bit, but it's not. It's I just put it back there so it lands straight up every time. Oh yeah. Uh, that way, you don't have to worry about the frog flipping around on you on its back or anything like that it will it will land Hmm. straight up every time uh so uh that's that's been a really popular one uh the the other fly i would say uh that's been popular for me is the bluegill belly bean and it was a it's a small fly that i came up with for bluegill um that I was fishing for in a pond and actually it's the more I use it, the, the more species it catches. Uh, I, I, that's what I caught that grass carp on oh, yeah. at the end of the season. It, it, you know, worked really well for that. I sent it to Eric, uh, you know, the carp stalker over there mm-hmm. in Indy, he caught uh carp on it and, and, you know, 
He said it's an excellent carp fly. Uh, so and I've also used it for smallmouth bass. Um, and I sent it to a guide, uh, Debbie Hansen, uh, down in Florida, and she used it and, and was catching cichlids uh, <laughs> with it. Uh, so it's been used for all kinds of things, and, and you know, I still get comments on it. It shows, uh, you know, they, you know, they like that fly when they pick it. Oh yeah, this is definitely going to catch some fish. You know, yeah. it's a good fly. I, I can tell, yeah. you know, something like that. Is that a, is that a jig hook used on the bluegill belly bean? Yeah, it's a jig hook. It's a, it's actually a Daiichi. What, um, what would you know? What uh, number uh, or what number that hook is? Yeah, it's 4640. 4640. Okay. Cool. And okay. So that gives us a little taste. And now going back to that frog, how do you, how do you tie the legs in on the, um, onto the hook? Uh, what I do is I use, uh, you could use any kind of, you could probably use bead wire. What I, what I do is I use, uh, intruder wire, uh, okay. which is, it, it, you know, it's real sturdy. And, and so I just kind of loop it around and, and the legs I, uh, I put the foam poppers on shanks, and mm-hmm. so I loop the. Oh, cool! Uh, yeah, I, I I loop the intruder wire around those shanks and yeah. and hook it to the uh, hook shank that way. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, those are those are good. Uh, and so you think those are uh, some of the fly? I mean, in those you've been submitted, those are at Orvis, right? Or at least a couple of those are. Uh, actually, the bearded wonder is at uh, Orvis. Uh, but I haven't, I, I kind of got out of the submitting my flies, uh, mm-hmm. here lately. It just takes a lot of time. And, uh, so I, I haven't done that lately. I, I'm planning to submit the frog probably to, uh, rainies mm-hmm. because they're, it was made out of their foam poppers. I just think it's only fair that yeah I submit it to them. And, uh, the, the bluegill belly bean, actually, I, I forgot to mention, uh, if you, uh, Tim Flegler, uh-huh. uh, Tightline Productions, yeah. he did a video on that fly. Oh, cool. So you could look that up on YouTube and see how to tie that fly. Good. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll link out to that. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, and I w- wanted to check with you before we move on here. Um, let's see. This was Mark uh, in the Facebook group had another question for you specifically. Or specifically, he was saying he wanted to know what your most, uh, your most favorite and least favorite thing is about uh, fly fishing. Wait, does anything come to mind when you, you know, that's kind of a general <laughs> question, but I don't know if you know Mark, Mark Isaac. I think it's, oh no, Usyk, Usyk. Uh-uh. No, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. He, well, he, he, uh, he wanted me to ask you that. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I don't, I'm, my favorite thing about fly fishing is about everything about it. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know if I can pick one. Th- I just love being out, you know, on the water, being out, you know, uh, on the river or the lake or pond, wherever, you know, it doesn't matter to me and it doesn't really matter what I'm catching. Uh, as long as there's a tug on the end of the line, it doesn't matter to me. I just love it all. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm bite, biting at the bit now for the winter to be over. Cause I'm, you know, that's right. Uh, and I, and I love tying, but you know, I, I want to get out on the water. So, mm-hmm. nice. uh, so, you know, but the, the least favorite, ah, boy, I don't know if I have a least favorite. The only thing I can really comes to my mind is when I'm on a river. Uh, there's a river called the Tippy Canoe uh, here in Indiana, where there's jet boats just flying by me while I'm while I'm trying to fish, and I just want to, you know, yep, throw something at those guys <laughs> or something. That's right. Yeah, you know, that's about my least favorite. That's yeah. right. I, I hear you. We <laughs> we have the same thing on our, uh, you know, one of our main rivers, the jet boats, and it's pretty uh-huh. funny because you know a lot of people have, you know, they eventually go to the jet boats and they get them just because if you can't beat them, join them. But uh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. When we were kids, we made a movie. Uh, my brother was like into making movies when we were really young, and he made this movie about how I think it was something like how to kill the jet sleds. And we made this whole movie on the river about like taking down the jet sleds. So it was it, <laughs> pretty extreme, pretty extreme for for kids. But uh, I hear what you're saying. It, it's it's kind of it's pretty funny. Well, l- before uh, I, you know, I guess on that line, you know, as far as love, you know, fishing or whatever, do you are you, do you think you're a better uh, fisherman or a better fly tire? Oh, I'm, I'm a better fly tire, I think. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, I, I love to fish and I, you know, I don't, 
I really don't. I I just really think I I'm a better fly tire than fisherman because sometimes, you know, I'll I'll go out and not catch what I want to catch, but yeah. you know, it, it happens. Yep. There you go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Um, and what about your tools, vices, uh, vice tools? Uh, what, what do you, do you have a main vice you like to use company wise? Yeah, I use HMH vices. Okay. I use an HMH TRV, which is their newest vice. Uh, and then I also use an HMH standard, uh, that's been around since the seventies. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, those, those are my main yep. vices. Yep. Cool. And then what about, it sounds like you're using some, uh, some loon stuff now for tools is that you got a little mix of stuff you're using there yeah i'm using a lot of loon uh tools i, I really like their tools uh i do have some uh scissors uh some specialized scissors that deer creek uh, mm-hmm. uh makes and i just posted them on my instagram not too long ago you'll probably see a picture of me oh, okay. go there but uh it's uh and uh, Deer Creek, uh, I've used them for, for several years from Deer Creek, and they they wanted to make some that were Frankenfly. And so I kind of uh, went that route, and, and I've just offered them for a short time, and I'll be uh, getting some more from them and offering uh, several more uh, out there because the first batch went pretty quick. Okay. So, so you're putting uh, your the, name on the, on the scissors? Yeah, they're on the inside of the scissors, okay. uh, as well as Deer Creek's name, and the the paint job on them is uh, Frankenfly collars. Oh, so, there you go. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, but they're really good scissors. They're really quality scissors. Uh-huh. Very sharp, uh, and that you know I really enjoy those. Uh, is and yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go I, was ahead. Just, I was just going to say, it sounds like. And are there other products that you're looking at putting your name brand on the similar sort of thing? Yeah, I actually have an idea for a bobbin. Uh, I've already have it all drawn up and everything. Mm-hmm. I just uh, I haven't got it manufactured yet, but yeah, I'm thinking towards that way. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm looking at them now. The the Deer Creek Pro razors, uh, scissors, right? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's kind of red, almost red, white, and blue, or red, silver, and blue. Those are an older pair. Oh, okay, those are the older if, ones. Those are the older ones. If you go to my Instagram, if you just go down just a few, you you should see. Do you have an Instagram link on your Frankenfly website? I don't think so. No. Uh -uh. No. But it's just Frankenfly on Instagram. Okay. If you just look up Frankenfly. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. I'll take a quick peek there. Um, Okay. And I guess finishing up that. They're kind of red. uh, Go go ahead. uh, They're kind of red handles with black and green. Okay. Those are the colors. Yeah. You'll notice them then. Okay, cool. And then uh, just touching back on the carp flies uh, before we get out of here on the carp flies. Um, any other things you know you might touch on as far as you know getting in? It sounds like you're you're going to be tying more carp flies. Is this something that you're doing for production and uh, kind of going there? I I don't I don't know uh, how much I'll tie for production, but I'll definitely be. I usually turn my I have an online store on Frankenfly. Uh, but I usually turn it off during show season uh, because oh. I I can't keep up with orders and tie for shows at the same time. So uh, <clears throat> usually during show season, I've got one more show left in Michigan, uh, the Midwest Fly Fishing Expo coming up here in March. Uh, but uh, after that, I'll turn the store back on. But yeah, I'll yep. be putting my the carp flies up on on my store and and the latest one. Um, I'm I'm really digging. Uh, you, you know, you you would see it if you would go to my uh, Instagram. It's it's the like probably the the picture before the latest one mm-hmm. uh, uh, that I'm really happy with that one. So uh, yeah, I'll be you know once I I get to the water a little bit more with them and, and I'll be putting them on the store. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting that you're able to. Yeah, you can just. I guess that makes sense. Just turn the link off, and now you don't. You turn your store off, and you, it's not. It's not open, right? It's closed. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I, and I, I get some messages about that, and I just tell them, you know, I'll, I'll turn it back on. I just got to, and everybody understands. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. No big deal. That's right. Yeah. You wait. What, how long is your show season? A few months. 
Yeah, it's only a few months. It's you know usually I I go to shows uh, January, February, and March. So okay. after that, gotcha. it's it's done. Yeah. Well, what's your long term uh, plan with the, the, all the stuff you got going? Do you have any plans with Frank and Fire? Are you going to keep doing what you're doing? It sounds like you you you're not posting quite as often as you used to. What, do you have an overall uh, goal for that site? No, and I you know I don't I don't see no end to it right now. I you know I just. I still enjoy doing it, and, and I I still, uh, you know, like getting out there and, and posting uh, interesting things. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep posting on it. I don't, I don't have any uh, end goal. I I'll just keep expanding uh, as much as I possibly can, and then I'll just keep posting uh, information. Uh, you know, as as long as people are interested in reading it. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've had this conversation a couple of times. I've had a few older guests that have been on with sites. Well, one of them, westfly.com, was out in the West. It was a big, at, at the time, a pretty big web, website for kind of Western trout fishing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and he pretty much just closed it up just recently, you know, shut, mm-hmm. up, shut up the doors. And it, I mean, it must have had thousands of articles on it. And it's yeah. kind, of, it kind of was one of those things where you're like, wow, like, boom, just like that. You know, that's the thing about books. You know, books are always out there, but you close down a, a website and, and instantly, uh, you know, all that information is gone. I know. It's kind of scary, actually. I, You yeah. know, I've <clears throat> that Michigan Dry Fly uh, website mm-hmm. that you yep. uh, that you found, the owner of that, I actually talked to many times because I was into that. And uh, he, he was a friend of mine, you know, after you know dealing with him so so much through email and and he passed away and i thought oh my gosh they're going to shut the site down but his his luckily his son keeps it going so he doesn't post on it anymore but at least he keeps it live so people can look for the information there you go yeah that's exactly it that's exactly it Cool. All right. Well, let's, uh, we're going to get out of here pretty quick. I just had a couple of quick ones for you here. Uh, we talked about flies. If you, um, this is kind of the 222 I usually do before we get out. Um, as far as two, two flies, two tips, two resources, we, we covered the flies. What about tips? Do you have any just general fly tying tips you throw out there to somebody who maybe is struggling a little bit to tie some, maybe some streamers or anything that you're good at? I would say, you know, the, the major tips is, you know, watch, watch, you know, YouTube videos, go to, uh, shows, watch other fly tires that you find interesting uh, Mm -hmm. and, you know, ask them questions, you know, usually, you know, it, they'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Uh, Or or if you see somebody online, you know, send them a message, say, Hey, how did you do that? You know, uh, what, how did you do that on the, on the front hook there or or something? You know, do you struggle at all uh, responding to people that are asking, you know what I mean? Like if you get emails or can you keep up with everything? No, I no, I keep up with everything. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I get a lot of emails uh, from different places, but, you know, and and from the companies, too. But uh, I, you know, I just do my best and answer answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, as best I can when I, I don't, I don't mind getting emails or, or questions. Mm-hmm. What about a, what about a social media tip? Do you have a tip for somebody that's trying to do better out there? And I guess, I mean, what is the goal for social media? I guess to, to share a message, right? Yeah. Share a, a message. I, I think the, you know, the best thing you can do is learn, um, and, you know, I'm not the best photographer. I just do the best I can. Just just try the best you can to try to get a good photo of your fly and mm-hmm. and try to tie uh, the best looking fly you can you can tie. It doesn't have to be, you know, great looking to the pr- – but, I mean, tie it in a quality way. You know, tie it right. neatly uh, to display it neatly because people are really drawn to that, especially on Instagram. You know, a nice looking photo of a nice looking fly, they're – they're me and and the other thing is it don't it doesn't have to be all about that you know you need to make sure you you go out and you test these flies you make sure they swim correctly I mean hmm. you know you you could tie a really good looking fly and throw it in the water and it would swim like a sock yeah you know you you just don't know until you swim it you know I'll mm-hmm. swim it in and I'll swim my flies in the bathtub first and even that and that'll give me some idea but then you know I won't really know until I get out on the on the water and throw it in the water and, you know, strip it or whatever I want to do with it and, and see how it swims and reacts then. So, yep. Yep. What is your favorite material to use right now? If you had to pick one, my favorite material to use right now, 
Uh, it's got to be your dubbing, right? <laughs> yeah, I got to say monster dubbing. Yeah. I mean, monster dubbing, I, I just use that. You can just use that in so many ways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think? So is it used on, I mean, like pretty much dries, wets everything out there? that I mean, you've seen everything tied with it? Yeah, actually, it's a longer dubbing, but I've seen people use it for uh, smaller flies. They just they just cut it or pull it apart. But I actually make a nymph dubbing that I forgot to mention. It's still under the Franken dub thing, mm-hmm. uh, but it's a nymph dubbing. It's a shorter dubbing uh, that I make. Okay. All right. Cool. And what about, uh, so do you have a couple of resources, maybe something that's not your own that you'd recommend if somebody wanted to get better at fly tying? Is, are there any video channel, you know, any YouTube channels or anything or books, magazines, resources, anything you'd, you'd recommend? I would definitely recommend Tim Flagler, mm-hmm. uh, Tightline Productions YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he's a phenomenal tire and he will really show you some uh, some tips that you may not even think of yourself and even as a beginner tire you know he's showing you the correct way to do things so he's and he explains as as he as he ties so it's a it's a good resource yep yeah tim he he does a great job for sure one of the best okay uh, and then any other um channels or magazines or any any websites that you follow out there uh i visit fiberglass manifesto Mm -hmm. uh pretty much daily with Cameron. Yep. Uh, that's an excellent blog. It's really interesting. It puts a lot of different content on it. And actually that's, that's the guy I asked about when I was thinking about starting Frankenfly and he said, go for it. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's a great idea. So, uh, but yeah, no, I, I still follow Cameron, uh, just because I really love reading his content. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I think I like Brian wise on YouTube, uh, fly fishing, uh, the Ozarks. Okay. He's, uh, he, he's, he doesn't, he, it's more of a, you know, he plays, you know, music and, and ties, but it's cool. And you know, it's mm-hmm. really cool to watch him tie. And then he goes through, uh, streamers and it's, it's cool. It's cool. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you know, he doesn't talk and explain. So it's, it's probably not good for a beginner, but it's, yeah. it's a cool thing to watch. Just to watch. So. Yeah. Something maybe yeah. to put on in the background. A little music. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, we're just about there. Uh, any, I guess, um, let's see if I had, I had one more question here just on, um, I was kind of curious your area. I mean, we, we talk a lot about some of the conservation issues in our area. We don't dig into it too deep, but are there any conservation issues out in your neck of the woods you, you might want to highlight here just so people are aware of, and maybe there's a place they can, you know, do something. I'm not sure. I, I you don't hear much about Indiana. Are there any hot topics out there? <laughs> yeah, the, you know, the the problem that kind of bugs me with Indiana is, you know, we have a huge river here uh, called the Wabash River. And that's mm-hmm. basically what uh, the tributaries uh, are some of the rivers that, that we fish, like that tippy canoe that I mentioned, Sugar Creek, you know, stuff like that. It all stems from the Wabash in some way. So uh, the okay. Wabash uh, has – definite issues you know they 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 still you know there's signs posted you know that they dump you know crap in there and you know whatever and it's you know it it could definitely be cleaned up and you know uh just to give you a quick uh idea about that you know the wabash you know you go by and it's just just looks like a muddy nasty river huge river okay and so i was telling my wife for the first time that we, when we were going up to michigan i said hey we're gonna go up and we're you know i want i want to fish this ensemble you know the ensemble river mm-hmm. i'm hearing a lot about it. and she's mm-hmm. like you gotta be kidding me we, we're gonna drive up there and see some muddy river you want to get and i'm like no 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 this isn't like the wall back okay <laughs> and so she doesn't believe me so we get up there and, and you know and we, we get a place that's right there on the river, and I walk out there, and I'm standing in the mirror. I'm like, what do you think? She's like, oh, my God, you can see right through this. <laughs> this is beautiful, you know. So yep. she understood there's uh, – you know, when you <laughs> – yeah. when she's only used to the wall bash, how, how much – a difference it can be so yeah well, what is the wall what is the uh the wall what do you think the major thing the reason it's cloudy do you do you know it's a huge river i mean it's it's a big river it's it's not something you could you could wade you know uh, it's deep i mean you it's a big big river so uh but it's still you know i feel like you know putting 
all the crap they do and yeah. you know it's it's filtering through the tributaries true i mean the tributaries aren't as muddy i mean you can go to the sure uh, go to sugar creek and you know it's quite a bit clearer uh but yep. it's nothing like you know, going up to Michigan on, on the Osabo or something like that. So. Totally. I found a link. Uh, I'll put a link. This is from a nature.org. Um, it says, this is the Wabash river. They talk a little bit about it. There's a video there. I think it's from the nature conservancy, but it says the issues in the Wabash seven species, decades of draining and developing land in the Wabash has degraded the water quality, the loss of lands, riparian. So yeah, it's, it's typical stuff yeah. that's happened all around the country, basically uh, ur- yeah. urbanization and growth and stuff like that. Okay, good. Well, that, I'm glad, I'm glad you highlighted that. I'll, I'll leave a link and maybe if somebody has questions or uh, they can kind of take a look at that video. Um, but um, okay. yeah, I'm going to start doing a little more. I've, um, I don't do much conservation, but I'm going to start hitting on some topics, especially that, that, you know, some of my guests that are passionate about and uh, get the word out. So, um, yeah, okay, Paul. That's well, great. well, we're about there. Um, I guess before I let you go, one one random question here. Um, are you more? Are you listening to? Well, two two random questions. The first one: Do you listen to more music or podcasts? I well, okay. Or there's neither. two parts to that. <laughs> there's there's two parts to that. I I actually listen to a lot of music, especially while I'm tying. Uh, but actually, when I drove back and forth to Orvis, or I'm going to uh michigan for a show or anywhere for a show i'll put on a podcast yep. so yeah so I, I listen to both yeah in different ways so do you have a a non uh fly fishing podcast you enjoy no no all fishing <laughs> that's cool all right good. It, it, it's all fishing yeah. good all right are you thinking about you got this little uh thing going. i guess it's writ- the written word but have you thought about starting your own podcast no, 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 no. I no, I'll leave that to somebody like you. Yeah. You, you do a much better job. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. And uh so this one came from Joe Jackson in the Facebook group. And again, this is at Oh uh, no. Yeah, yeah. This I is gonna Joe. be a good one. You're gonna be ready for this one. Uh <laughs> so uh this is a, a it's a one word question. Beard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was it. I might have just I might have just highlighted that that was. I was what to, is he? To, I don't know. Maybe he's thinking I should grow a, a larger beard. I, think I don't that's like him. Is. I think that's yeah, what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I need a bushier beard, maybe. Yeah, yeah I'll have yeah. to ask him. Yeah, he's he's here in Indiana. Joe is. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, Joe. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he was calling. Yeah, he's in our. Um, I got a little group uh, at wetflyswing.com slash group. It's just our uh, Facebook group and. Uh, yeah, we I occasionally when I have questions for people, if I have time, I'll just reach out and say, "Hey, does anybody have a question? I've got you know um, Paul coming on or whatever." So yeah, it, it works out well because that's the that's the good stuff that I would never know anything about that. I wouldn't even know, right? It, that's the amazing thing, right? We haven't even seen each other in, in person yet, you know. Yeah. I don't either. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but okay. Well, um, <laughs> we, you know, this this episode has been, you know, we kind of jumped around a little bit. But any any takeaways? If you had to look back on what we talked about here from today, would you have one takeaway from today? Uh, you know, I just hope I, uh, you know, uh, gave some interesting information, you know, I didn't bore anybody. That's, <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't know. I, but I, I really enjoyed the questions you gave. I, okay. I thought it was really, really good. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I think it's, uh, I mean, I think that some of the stuff you've done, like in the dubbing and, and well, just the website, you know what I mean? You, you've got a website that's out there that, like you said, people come and they, they find you through that. So it's, it's a resource, you know, same thing with this podcast. It's just providing some, some resources for people. So that, that's good. Um, in the next six, 12 months, anything new you got coming, you want to let us know, um, with, you know, you yourself or the business or personally? Uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I've got some ideas, but I don't, I'm not sure if they'll pan out, you know, and that, and I, I, I can't really say some uh something about the biggest plan i have right now but <laughs> there might be something of a surprise coming yet oh cool cool all right all right so i'll, I'll have to we'll check back with you in, in six months or so <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. okay all right all right uh, paul so <clears throat> i guess uh, frankenfly.com they can kind of check out your stuff there and uh and reach out to you on instagram might be the best place if they have questions yes yes okay yeah they can always message me on instagram i i'm easy to get a hold of there Okay, perfect. Well, I'll, I'll let you get out of here. Just want to thank you again for uh, stopping by and you know spending an hour or so kind of chatting about some fly tying. And I'll I'll keep up with you. Yeah, maybe on uh, social there, I'll reach out and you know kind of. I'm not even sure how the algorithm. You could probably tell me more how the algorithm algorithm works. It seems like you know you follow somebody and you like their stuff, and also they disappear and you don't see yeah. them again. You know what I mean? Like, uh, do, have yeah. you have you figured that out yet? Uh, well, on Facebook, it's just. 
Oh, it's pay. really bad on Facebook. Pay. Yes, exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, Instagram, I don't, I don't find it so bad. I, I, I pretty much find who I need to find. I mean, I, you know, my, my uh, protein members, I, I don't have any trouble okay. uh, finding when they post something. So, oh, cool. cool. All right, Paul. Well, we'll let you go, and I'll, I'll check back with you at a later point. Yeah, Dave. Hey, I really appreciate you having me on the podcast. I, you know, I, I think it's really good that you're doing this and uh, it's really cool and uh, I'll definitely keep listening to you. All right. Yeah. Thanks again. We'll, we'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks, Dave. All right. See you. So there you go. If you want to find the show notes with all the links we covered, just go to wetflyswing.com slash 129. And I uh, would love it if you could take a second and click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, and also, if you haven't done it on Apple Podcasts, that would be awesome. If you could go over there and actually click the subscribe button there, that helps uh, tell uh, Apple that uh, people are listening and will help us uh, find a few more people to help, hopefully help uh, find a few more fish. That's all I have for you today. Uh, if you have any questions, please check back with me. Uh, thank you for your support and want to thank you for stopping by today. Uh, looking forward to maybe catching up with you on the river sometime soon or maybe online. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com. And if you found this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes.